Hey everyone, it's been a long time since the last video and in today's video we'll show you how to create a vertex wave animation using shader graph. This shader graph has been brought to you by my friend Andre Vasquez, so thanks to him for this. Uh, this vertex animation can be used to animate maybe seaweeds, uh, fishes or even flags. So without any delays, let's get started. And it's worth to mention that we will use the sine formulas to shape the waves. Using the sine formulas allows to create realistic waves. And here is also a reference if you want to go deeper in understanding the sine waves. This shader can work on both HDRP and URP pipelines, but I decided to go with the HDRP scene and I've added some volume effects like the visual environment, I made it gradient sky, I, and I set a gradient sky to a gradient from cyan to black to imitate or give the feeling of underwater scene. Let's start by applying the shader to a basic shape like capsule for two reasons. First, to understand the concept of the sine waves. Also, because some imported models might have a different axis than the normal unity axis. So let's create a capsule, then let's create a new material, vertex wave mat, and create new lit HDRP shader graph, vertex wave. Apply the shader graph to the material, then apply the material to our capsule. Let's open the shader graph and start by creating a position node to gain access to the vertices of the object. So change the space to object, then we want to do a wave, a sine wave on the Y axis. So we need a split node to gain access to the Y axis. The best sine waves can be created using the multiples of double pi. So one pi is 3.14, so double pi is 6.28. So we create a multiply node and we set the B value to 6.28. Then we create a new flow to control the multiples of the double pi. And let's name it the height wave frequency. Then drag that to the A point on the multiply. Then let's multiply the results with the Y axis. Since we want to do a movement first for something like a seaweed, it will move on the Y axis. If you want to do a fish animation, it should be on the Z axis because it will move on the depths of the object, not the height of it. Let's group all those nodes and name the group height wave. Then simply to create the wave, we add a sine node and link to it the results of multiply and then we link that to the vertex position. Let's save and see what happens on the scene. As you can see, the model has totally disappeared from the scene and that's because we calculated the additional wave which will be added to the original position of the vertices, so we forgot to add the original position of the vertices, then we will add to it the wave value. So let's create a position node and set the space to object. Then use an add node to add the wave to the original position of the vertices. Then link the results to position in the vertex section. Now if we save and hit play, we will notice that when we change the frequency, the height wave frequency, it will move the vertices in all axes at the same time. But we want only to move the vertices on the X axis along the Y of the wave movement. So to fix that, we go back to the shader graph and we split the position node to gain access to the X axis, then we recombine the results using a combined node again. And now as you can see, the vertices is moving on the X axis only. But I'm moving that manually, but we need it to move automatically over time. So let's go back to the shader and create a time node. 
then we need to control the speed of the vertices movement or the speed of the wave. So let's add a new pro property called uh, wave speed. Then we multiply that with the time. Then we add the results before the sine node. So now, as you can see, the vertices keeps moving over time automatically. And you can control both the wave speed and the height wave frequency. And to control the trends of the wave, we simply can create a new property, a new float called amplitude. Then we multiply that with the results of the sign. But as you can see now, all the vertices are moving, which is not logical in the case of the seaweeds or the grass. We need only the, the top part of the model to move while keeping the bottom of it stable or without any movement. To do that, we need to mask the vertices on the y-axis. So let's go back to the shader graph and create this mask. Create a position node using the object space, then use a split node to gain access to the y-axis, then use a smooth step node to control where we show the wave on the game object. So let's create two new floats. The first one is the min mask and the second one is the max mask to control where the wave should be visible on the y-axis then link both the new floats to the min and max and link the y-axis to the int. Of course, the white areas means where the wave will be shown while the black area, it will mask the wave. So in our case, the top area should be white and the bottom area should be black and the uh, seaweed or the game object will move on the upper side only. Then we can apply that mask using a lerp node to lerp between the original position of the vertices and between the waved ones. So let's create a new position node using the object space, not the world space. I made a mistake here. Then we lerp between them using the mask we created by linking the mask to the T at the lerp node. Then we link the results to the position of the vertex. As you can see here in the preview, only the top side of the game object or the model is waving. And now as you can see, we reached a satisfying result where the wave is masked at the bottom side of the game object or the model. Now we have only one final problem. If we copied this capsule three times and move it on the Z axis, all the capsules will move exactly the same way, which is unrealistic. To solve this issue, we can add additional wave on the Z axis, a depth wave. So let's go back to the shader graph and repeat everything we did for the height wave with only two differences. The first one is to change the space to the world. Then we will use the z-axis to do the wave. All other things or, no and or nodes are the same. We just needed to create a new float to control the wave trends or frequency on the z-axis by creating a new property called depth wave frequency. Then we add the results of the depth wave before the sign. Save and go back to the scene. Now change the frequency of the depth wave that will randomize the wave on the z-axis and gives a randomization to the waves on the z-axis, which gives the seaweeds or the model that's moving a lot of variations and more realistic and logical results. I've downloaded two models from Sketchfab. One is a seaweed and the other one is a fish. Then apply the same technique to create this nice looking vertex wave shader graph. And as you can see, we can control everything freely to reach the desired results. We can control the speed, the height frequency, the amplitude of the wave, in addition to the depth frequency, 
how the animation is masked based on the min and max height. Of course, if you want to apply a materials or a texture to the shader, simply you can add sample texture to the node, then link it to the albedo or the color of the shader graph. And that's it for today's video. If you found this useful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss the next tutorial. Uh, of course, this project is available to our dear supporters on Patreon. Henry Chen, Dimitri Yablovsky, Juan Lin Huang, Edward Badgias, Paul Deruras, Alexander Schwetz, Shubham Booz, Wee Yang, Fabrizio Spadro, KBDXDBK, Archim Kanadolski, G. Jamus, C. Jamus, Men, Herman Moibruch, Skan Daugu, John Fishman, Shauran Lee, Hesprax, Hedge Fog, Andre Pires, Jim Bacholo, Orziang, uh, Alejandro Hrandaz, Win Chuan Chi, Mark Neff, Chan. Chanama Digital, Pino Beer, CMS, Justin Gibson, Dream Chatter, Ken Mesuda, Ravio Sepsep, Christopher Mansi, Claudio A, Liv Dumanio Chenriz, Ether the Sky Lord, Panda Owl, Brian Fonman, Zen Yang, Rami Hanano, Jos Amrike, Mehmed Aiden, Pira Chambun Chim, Fu RTS Shaharbar, Dimitri Vasiliev, Parkan Nilsson, Jens Valentine, and Jack Crystal. Thanks for watching and till next video, see you soon.